Welcome to online classes. Myself, Ashwini. I am your biology teacher. So, in this class, I am going to start with a new chapter called as Poemology, which is the ninth chapter. The chapter weightage is five marks, and you can expect two marks for your neat exam from this chapter. So, bio molecules, as the name suggests, bio means living. So, the molecules present in the Living organisms, we are calling it as biomolecules. Let us start with the introduction. So, Earth consists of various types of living organisms. So, which includes unicellular as well as multicellular organisms. So, uni means single cell. Multicellular, multi means, which is made up of many cells. Either it is a unicellular or multicellular, all are made up of similar type of inorganic elements and organic compounds. Okay, either it is a unicellular or multicellular, they are made up of same type of inorganic elements and organic compounds. So, what is the meaning of inorganic? So, the compounds which do not have carbon and hydrogen bond. So, whereas organic means which consist of carbon hydrogen bond is called as organic. Which consists of carbon hydrogen bond is called as organic. So, the four elements like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen so they contribute around 97 to 99 percentage of the body of living organs that is so carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen contribute around 97 to 99 percentage of body of our living organs of which carbon forms more than 50 percentage of dry weight of an organism. Okay. So, among these four elements, the carbon alone forms more than 50 percentage of dry weight of an organism. What is the dry weight? When we consider the tissue, it consists of some amount of water. So, the weight of the tissue with water is called as wet weight. So, the weight of the tissue without water content is called as dry weight. Okay. So, in the dry weight, more than 50 percentage is contributed by carbon. So, all the carbon compounds present in the living organisms are called as biomolecules. So, that is the definition. That is all the carbon compounds present in the living organism. Living organism, we can call it as biomolecules. So, even the biomolecules are also defined as the organic substances which play major role in structure and function of an organism. So, the organic substances which help in structure and function of an organism is also called as biomolecules or they are also called as biological molecules. They are also called as Biological molecules. So these biomolecules are not living, but they play a vital role in the living process. So hence, with the help of biomolecules, we can study the living process. So some of the examples for biomolecules are carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, Enzymes. So, some of the important examples are carbohydrates, 
lipids, proteins, nucleic acid and enzymes. So these are the some of the important biomolecules present in the living organism. So when we consider a cell, so there are various types of biomolecules are there. The collection of different types of biomolecules, we'll call it as cellular food. Okay. So collection of collection of different types of biomolecules in a cell is called as cellular pool is called as cellular pool so the cellular pool exists in a two phases so it exists in two phases one is aqueous phase another one is non aqueous phase so first one is aqueous phase second one is non aqueous phase so aqueous phase means so the chemicals dispersed in water so aqueous phase means which are dispersed in water we'll call it as aqueous phase so whereas non aqueous means so the chemicals gets deposited into structure like chromatin cell wall etc okay so non aqueous means here the chemicals get deposited into some of these structures like chromatin cell wall etc so in aqueous itself we have another two types so that is true solution and colloidal solution true solution and colloidal solution so as we know that aqueous solution means so the chemicals dispersed in water if they form into a homogeneous solution homogeneous means similar so if the chemicals dispersed in water form into a particles of almost similar size around like 1 nanometer we'll call it as true solution then so the substance the substance which form into true solution we are calling it as crystalloids the substance which are forming into true solutions we are calling it as crystalloids then coming to colloidal solution so the chemicals dispersed in water form into a heterogeneous solution hetero means different so the chemicals dispersed in water form into various particle size which ranges from 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer is called as colloidal solution and the substance which form into colloidal solutions we call it as colloids the substance which form into colloidal solution is called as colloids and the substance which will form into true solution is called as crystalloids so this is regarding the introduction of the topic so the next sub topic is analysis of chemical composition analysis of chemical composition so here a living tissue will be taken and which will be chemically analyzed so why we have to do that because to know the various biomolecules present in the living organisms so this chemical analysis can be done by two methods one is acid solubility test acid solubility test another one is ash analysis
So, first let us discuss with acid solubility test. So, here we are going to take a piece of living tissue. So, like liver or leaf will be taken into your mortar and pestle. So, mortar will be just, it is a small cup like structure. Okay. So, this is the mortar and into which we are taking the living tissue. Either we can take the liver or leaf. To this, we are going to add TCA. That is trichloro. Acetic acid. Trichloroacetic acid is added into the mortar. Then by using pizzle. Pizzle will be just a small rod like structure like this. By using pizzle, we are going to make it into a thick paste or slurry. Okay. So by grinding the living tissue, we are going to get the thick paste or Slurry is obtained. So this slurry or paste has to be filtered so to get different fractions. Okay. So for filtering here we are going to use the cotton cloth or the filter paper fixed to the funnel like this. So we are going to take the funnel. To which... A filter paper will be fixed. And this funnel will be inserted into your conical flask. For collecting the sample. Now what we will do is, the slurry obtained here is poured into the funnel fixed with the filter paper or to the cotton cloth. Then, so, we can see the, the solution like composition will be collected in the conical flask. That is called as acid soluble filtrate. And so, which is collected in Funnel is called as acid insoluble filtrate. So the acid soluble filtrate first we'll discuss with that. So this acid soluble filtrate consists of large number of compounds whose molecular weight is very less. That is, it ranges from 18 to 800 Daltons. So, Daltons are the unit of molecular weight. So, the molecules which has 18 to 800 Daltons, so we will call it as micromolecules. And, so the molecules which has 18 to 800 Daltons or even we can call it as which has less than 1000 Daltons. We are calling it as micromolecules or biomicromolecules. So this acid soluble filtrate consists of some of the inorganic compounds, water, and minerals. Okay. So in the acid soluble filtrate, we can see the presence of so some of the inorganic compounds, water, and mineral salts. In case of organic, so in the same solution, we can find the some of the simple organic molecules like sugar, amino acids, fatty acids, or so, form some of the organic compounds, simple organic compounds like fatty acid, amino acid, sugar, nucleotides are formed. So, these biomicromolecules will have simple structure and high solubility. So, coming to acid insoluble 
filtrate. So this acid insoluble filtrate will have the biomolecules whose molecular weight is 10,000 Daltons are more than that. Whose molecular weight is 10,000 Daltons are more than that. We will call it as acid insoluble filtrate. So they are called as macromolecules or biomacromolecules. So they are called as macromolecules or bio macro molecules so it consists of proteins so the macromolecules consist of proteins polysaccharides nucleic acid and lipids okay so but in this acid insoluble filtrate, all these three that is proteins, polysaccharides and nucleic acids are having molecular weight around 10,000 or more than that. But whereas the lipid molecular weight is around 800 Dalton, then it is supposed to be in the acid soluble filtrate. But it is found along with the acid insoluble filtrate. So the reason is the lipid form into a plasma membrane and other membranes in case of a cell. When we are grinding the tissue, we are destroying the structure of the cell. So then, so the lipid found in the plasma membrane is broken into pieces. So those pieces will form into a structure called as vesicle. So these vesicles are not soluble in water. So because the TCA what we are using, it is made by dissolving in water. So the vesicles are not soluble in TCA as it is made up of water. So hence it is gets collected along with the acid insoluble filtrate, but it is not the macromolecule. So this is regarding the acid solubility test. Coming to the ash analysis. So the ash analysis test is done to know the inorganic elements and organic compounds found in the living organisms. Okay. So majorly it is done to know the inorganic elements and inorganic compounds present in the living organisms. To do this analysis, so we are going to require a living tissue which will be dried and burned. So why we are supposed to burn this? When we are burning the dried tissue, so the organic compounds will escape in the form of carbon dioxide and water. So the left out ash will be subjected for chemical analysis in that so we can find the sum of the chemical uh, elements like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, like that elements are found. So the inorganic compounds like phosphate, sulfate, carbonate, all these are found in case of ash 